All right, going to show this real quick. Um, I think I actually have the program complete and ready to, to try. Uh, it's Thursday night, so I'm just going to walk through this. This time I actually am showing you this here in Visual Basic 6 itself. Um, I have the form I'm using over here and the two modules that I have included uh, on this version of it. Uh, the serial protocol, the standard serial protocol uh, ones, and then the module for all the globalization, all the variables. Um, so I showed this before. So this, I've been down through this. Um, I did get all the signals calculated, I think. <laughs> um, all pretty much ready to go. Um, one thing I, I did change, I, I actually made it simpler, I believe or maybe not quite as realistic but for myself at least it gets going I wanted to do it this way one of the things when you have CTC uh, you need to have a direction of traffic uh, so in that block it knows whether the traffic is eastbound westbound or north south however your railroad is uh, oriented railroad direction um, and, and the samples I saw in the CMRI handbooks all were pr pretty simple samples single track railroads uh, and the OS's or control points were basically just turnouts with no real fancy switches or anything else going on. So it was pretty simple to set the directions of traffic. And when I got doing it for our particular layout, I, I started to realize that I don't think it's quite that simple uh, for the way I have some of these uh, control points set up. And I'll just give a, a quick example just to show what, what I'm thinking about here. This is a, an enlarged view of basically Eugene West, Eugene East. Um, this is our large uh, staging yard here. And then the two interlockings on each end, which include access to the yard, access to the intermodal yard on both ends. What you would normally do, for example, let's look at the direction of traffic here for block one, which is track one here between Eugene West, Eugene East. What you, at least what I understand it, what you normally do is when this control point becomes occupied and in this case since it's double track it's really you know right in here it's this area here that's the actual control point for track one so when it becomes occupied and the normal uh, you know you're coming this way you're heading westbound this becomes occupied you check and say okay so for for block one is my direction of traffic set to eastbound if it's not set it to westbound um, and then you, you you have the same check if you occupy CPEW1 to set the direction of traffic for block one from the other side if it's occupied coming this way check and see if it's westbound if it's not set it for eastbound okay that's great but if you look at this arrangement I think I run into a slight issue because just saying this is occupied isn't quite going to capture what I want because it could very well be that this, th this switch here, SM1, is thrown reverse. I'm going to come in here into the control point and go into the yard. So if that's the case, I don't want to be calculating the, the direction of traffic for block one. I'm not even going into block one. So I think I'd have to add some logic to check, you know, is that turnout thrown reverse? Um, and for example, if, if you're going to check it from this side, you know, you could occupy it coming across here through this turnout. And then the other thing I noticed is, especially for, for block one here, well, what if you occupy it coming out of the yard? Again, SM1 would be reverse. So you, you don't want to um, basically calculate the direction of traffic for block one if SM1 is reverse. Because otherwise you'd be setting it, but your train is going to come here, and go that way, or perhaps cross over and go out on track too, which what they would normally do. Um, so it, you just got to be careful with that. So I think I probably could do it with some logic statements, but for now I just didn't want to add more time because I, I really want to try to get this running and see what happens. So what we decided to do was I'm just going to check it based on the occupancy of the block itself. So when a train comes in, occupies block one, however it got there, straight crossed over whatever happened just check and then in this case if it's coming in this way check if it's not westbound it's not eastbound set it westbound if it occupies from this side if it's not westbound set it eastbound um, yeah, so whether it occupies it you know coming straight coming um, through the crossovers or whatever it's just going to check it now that's going to mean that the signals won't 
change quite as soon. Um, but let me just minimize it here, just go out here a little bit. For most of the layout, that won't be a huge issue. Now here in the yard it will be, because this distance is pretty close and you're definitely going to be able to see it. Although not that it's a whole lot different if you occupied it here in this signal change as opposed to here. It's maybe, you know, a foot and a half or so, but okay. Um, I mean, normally you probably would want the change as early as possible in the particular case that, that we're using. But I'm not too worried about it, to be honest, because the distances are normally great enough. Um, you know, for example, normally occupying track one or two here prior to heading over to Wallace Junction, it's actually out and around a curve physically. So when you come out of the yard, if I wait until this point to check the signals at Wallace Junction as opposed to over here, that's okay because you're not going to be over here looking this track physically, you know, curves around this way and the signal for Wallace Junction is, you know, over here where my mouse is flicking. So I can live with that compromise for now. Going forward, if I actually get this up and get it working and the signals are kind of reacting automatically the way I think they should, maybe then I'll go back and I'll start looking at ways to perhaps, you know, fine tune this to take into account the turnout positions um, and, and back things off to occupy at the actual control points. So for now, that's how we're going to do it. So like I said, this is, uh, as far as I know, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty set to go. I, I can't run all the way through it because I don't have the COM port set up. So it airs out uh, pretty much right away. It, it runs through, it, it runs down through here. Uh, it wants to go ahead and call the various, uh, call the inputs. It wants to do this, and when it you know goes to call inputs out of this module, I don't have the COM port set up or anything, so it errors out. So I can't check it too far. So I need to get downstairs on the computer that's with the layout, get it installed, hooked up, and run it and see what 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 the heck happens. Um, like I said, did go through. We checked all this. I think I have all the signals appropriately calculated. We will find out. Um, I did uh, set up all the intermediate signals, um, and and then we clear all the directions of traffic um, in between the blocks once once the train clears. Here, this sets all of the all the signals to red red. This is the main thing for the poor man CTC. Basically, if there's no you know train detected in the block approaching the signal, it stays red. Um, because if you just did it by block occupancy. You could have signals on both ends of a control point show green, and that would be really, really unrealistic to have this signal show clear and this signal show clear. You would never do that. But if all you checked was, you know, for this signal, if that block is unoccupied, make that green or clear. If if this block is unoccupied, make this clear. That it will do that. That that would be the, the logic for it. You don't want to do that because that will, to me, it will look really silly to have green, 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 green. You know, de definitely, definitely not prototypical. So again, what, what we're doing is not perfect, but at least it'll be a little bit more prototypical and automatic. So we're not going to man a, a dispatcher station with this particular program. Uh, so here's the approach lighting for the intermediate signals. Uh, basically, if the, if the blocks approaching them are clear, they're going to be dark uh, until a train goes in the block, then they'll turn on. Uh, this is where you pack and write all the outputs out to the railroad, out to the different nodes. And then you go back and you run it all over again. So we shall see. Um, today's Thursday. Uh, last night I went down and I and I worked on all the signals. I got them all pretty much uh, prepped. I'm going to install them all tonight, get them all hooked up. And then tomorrow, hopefully Steve and I are actually going to fire it up and try to run it and see how things actually operate. Uh, so I just wanted to show this here uh, before we actually start. Don't know what's all going to work. But uh, part of what we're doing with this video series is just kind of showing things as we go. Again, not saying we're perfect, so you're going to see things that happen, mistakes and all. So I don't know. We'll see if this is right, and uh, we'll forge ahead, and uh, we'll update a little bit later to see how it all runs. If it all runs. All right, it's a real quick update just to show uh, kind of the, the process I'm following underneath here. Um, and this is a pain in the butt with these little wires. But what I've come to do is take all the commons, uh, put them together, and go to your common connection. Um, and then what I did on the upper side is I would use a little single tester and I would find each lead, uh, each signal, and then if I could, I would label what they are coming through and then go down and hook them all up. 
and then again using the, the signal tester I'll put this on the what would be the 5 volts on the common and I can sit outside the layout with this and touch this to each of the signals in sequence and verify that they work okay there's no missed connections there's no loose connections and I've done that so far and it seems to be somewhat workable um, again it's not fun but it does seem to work alright so we got the program up and here's one of the neat things that can happen uh, before it actually runs uh, I have the layout on now the program is up but I haven't run it yet so you can see what the signals do I'm not sure what that indication is over there <laughs> but uh, on the right hand side but uh, you real railroaders you tell me what that is go to your rule book um, and even there on the left you can see it's got the yellow and the red indication so that happens um, when you first turn it on and before you actually run it it also happened up here so that's got a yellow and a red and it happened on other signals as well so just a note you don't have to freak out it doesn't mean anything's really wrong oh, there's one again with all the LEDs on so at least you know they all work so that happens when you first turn the layout on before you run the program alright programs running so these change back to be all red although we do have issues though it's still not it's not doing what it's supposed to do and I don't know why without digging into the code a little bit and we got to see but we can show you how the approach lit signals work although they're acting up a little bit too but uh, we'll show you how it works here at, uh, at 103 for the intermediate signal So that's 94 and that worked okay and the reason it went back to yell, uh, approach there is because these cars don't have detectable wheel sets on them. Alright, so he's going to come around and you'll see that that one goes on. Although why it's red on track 2 I don't know. <laughs> um, and this one, I don't think this one changes back like it should after uh, he runs through the signal there, it should go to obviously to red, but uh, it's uh, not doing it. So let's see what happens here. Here it comes. And it didn't change for some reason. Eh. Alright, we gotta work on that one too. Alright, this signal here, this is all hosed up. Um, it was green, green on each side, and it should have been red, red. And I figured out why, because I changed the one. I had, it's, it's wired backwards. So this one I might have to redo the board, because instead of, instead of set up for red, red, it's, it's going green, green. So that's another, that's like a, a wiring issue. I gotta, I gotta fix that. And then on this one over here, I don't know why this guy keeps freaking flashing like that. Um, I thought maybe I had a loose connection, but I, I had the signal bridge out, and I totally redid it, and uh, I had to separate the lead some more. So it's either something in the resistance board or in a wiring back to the to the node. I'm, I'm not sure. So it's another thing we, I got to check. Yeah, this is a problem too. This is. Uh, I set the intermodal to red red so that's that's okay and why it's green over red I don't know um, and it doesn't change so there's obviously something wrong in my, in my logic I guess I'm not quite as skilled a programmer as I thought even copying from uh, what was in the reference books so oh boy a lot of work to do so I also got this signal here at, uh, at the other end here Eugene West so all the signals themselves are pretty much in except for one at the one in the Pittsfield. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but uh, you can see it there again. Still have issues because I don't know why that is decided to be green when it <laughs> it should be red over red. Uh, I don't know. A lot of debugging to do, like I said. So, but they're in physically and the signals themselves. The, that is, and uh, we'll just keep working it. 
I said the pro the air the program itself isn't airing out, and signals are coming on. They're just not reacting the way that uh, I was hoping they're going to react. So, all right, we'll see. All right, so here's the program running. That's just the screen, the form I have come up, and um, one of the things I did to do some debugging. I'm going to, have to do quite a bit more. Um, I'm just having it print out some of the variables so I can see what's going on. And for example, there, if you look and you see the uh, uh, which one, uh, CP97 SM9 lock, you see it's one for locked. And if Steve unlocks it, you see it will change. So that that's working. And then he locks it again. All right. And then at CP97, those two crossovers, 10 and 11, if he throws a crossover. See that changes, so it's getting the feedback on the crossover. And he throws the other crossover. So it's, that's working. So it is getting feedback on those variables. So that's changing. Um, so I'm going to think maybe do some more prints and kind of see what's going on. Um, I think I might have an issue with the with the direction of traffic uh, variables as part of the problem, uh, in, in addition to other stuff that appears to be going on. So. Looks like we've got quite a bit of work to do here. Um, that's probably going to do it for now because unfortunately um, my other son and I um, and one of his friends and my wife we're going to go see the Cleveland Browns Arizona Cardinals game this weekend. So we're going to be gone pretty much all weekend so we won't be able to work on this. But as you can see we have issues. So um, we're going to have to dig into the program. Yeah, start going through it and see what in the world's going on because things just are not working properly. Um, now on the plus side, the program runs and doesn't error at all. So it's something in my logic. Um, and one miswired signal, I found that. It's probably something simple, although I've read through this and I, I don't know what's wrong. Um, I'm just going to print it out and just have to read through it and see what's going on. So. That'll probably be pretty much it for this week. Uh, next week, I can see we'll be doing a lot of debugging. And um, coming up as well, I just got a bunch of uh, additional scenery stuff. So we'll probably plan to do one of our uh, special segments on scenery um, coming up really soon as well. So, all right, so there you go. We got issues, but it is working. Um, or I say it's running, not doing what we want. Got a lot of uh, some debugging to do, um, so uh, more to come uh, as I figure out what in the world I'm doing wrong here. All right, final thing here. Um, Steve's got a, a train set here. It's an, that's a uh, actually a westbound train sitting in right now in Wallace Junction. You can see these signals are not right. Um, well, the one for the train is okay at uh, at approach. The other one's stopping. It shouldn't be because the block isn't occupied. So we got some work to do there. But what I did was I decided to put some diagnostic stuff in the program. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this train. And so here's this train sitting here. We're going to run it and just kind of show what we came up with uh, for some diagnostics, which might help. And actually, might just leave it up because it's uh, it's pretty interesting, at least when the program's running, to display certain things. So we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah.